Hey everyone, welcome to this interesting video in JavaScript. The best way to master a language is by programming in it. So in this video, we bring to you six simple applications that you can build using JavaScript and all of this in five hours. If you enjoy watching such tech videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So what's in store for you? We'll first create some simple beginner level projects like the to-do list app. Then we'll move on to a quiz app and then we'll see how to build a calculator app. Then we'll move on to more advanced apps like the weather app, the tic-tac-toe game and finally we'll conclude the session by creating a snake game application. Now I'm sure you're excited to dive deep into it. So let's begin. Using this JavaScript, CSS and HTML combo known as call to-do application. To-do application is kind of general task manager application where you can attach, add the task, delete the task and uh, complete the task. Very simple and sophisticated application where it's time to start working with. And here we start working with our first very simple statement that is known as call to-do. So let me go and create a new folder and call not here. New folder called to do app. Inside this to do app, I like to start working with HTML file index.html. And now here again we would like to start working with uh, HTML by considering that our CSS file will be well taken care of. So we say div sorry here div here we will say class equal to container. Now inside this we would like to have some header portion. Okay, so we say another div type and inside this div type we will say div id equal to this box okay and again class equal to header class equal to header. now here after that we will like to use the h2 tag and in such an h2 tag I can say my to do list after this H2, we we'll like to use the text box input input type of text id equal to item and placeholder equal to give anything. I am saying id. Okay, and uh, close this. Next, we we'll like to use the span tag. In this span, I'll say font click equal to. Now, I do not have the function name called new element, but we would like to create it. New element. Okay, and uh, class equal to give any name. I'm saying add. Okay, and uh, here I would like to add it. Right, that's my span tag now. Div tag is also getting closed. So after the div tag, we would like to use the ul. Ul, you know that is for an order list. Here I will say id equal to list. Under this ul tag, I will do for li, and within this li, you can say some name. Learn new tasks is the first item. Like that, I can have some other items with me. Play games. Walk with the dog. Like that, I can have n number of task which is available to me okay so here the ul tag is getting closed and the div tag is also getting closed that's it okay 
So I do not have any CSS file with me, so I can just create CSS. In this, I like to import it in here. Here, link or equal to style sheet href equal to to the link of dot dot CSS. That's it. Let me try to see the outcome. Okay, so I can have very simple look and feel for title. Nothing is there. Add, which must be a kind of a button for me or whatever it is. So it is just a span tag for me on which I will try to click and perform some action. So remember this not my button. Now, here once it is ready, I would like to go ahead and talk about my main CSS which will help me to make the complete look and feel. More better. Okay, thank you. So we're going to start working with the CSS now. From my CSS, uh, we want to basically perform the edit where close button I want to create it, and I want to create a close button to hide the current list items. In multiple activities I have it, which I want to do it with my CSS. So let's get started with CSS now, and with my CSS, I would like to create some basic effects to work my application fine so the step number one i would like to say asterisk for everything that means for everyone i'm saying box sizing border box basic one nothing is affected because it's for common for all here I would like to start with new body now. Body background color. Background color. I will say light steel blue. Light blue I've taken. And uh, background image, it's up to me whether I would like to use it or not. But I can use height 600 pixels. Next, background position that I would like to use center. Next is background repeat because if I do not have any image, I will not be using repeat. So, background size cover looks beautiful. Well. Going ahead, we talk about our container part now. Okay, so if I just see my previous code which is there with me, that is called calculator app. Here in this app dot CSS, have an option called container. So that was my container. I just copy this and I use it again here. Here in container width. I would like to use 50% now. Background color remain white. Align self center. Display block margin. This I will be using 120 pixels. Auto and box shadow. Border radius we are not using. Padding once again we are not using. Box shadow 5 pixel, 10 pixel, 20 pixels and back. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So this is my simple look. Now I'll talk about the UL part now. Margin zero. Next border left. Sorry, border left. Six pixels. T. Next. List hyphen style hyphen type. I'm saying none. Next padding zero. Let's take a look. Better. Okay. Now, so few things you missed. Uh, border left six pixels solid teal padding. Now we talk about our UL and LI part. Okay, 
cursor pointer next position relative next pattern we just would like to use 12 pixels like this background white and we will like smoke ok font size you can select 18 pixels transition for 0 0.2 seconds for transition ok and the last option user icon select none perfect now looks beautiful you can see now how the effects are awesome Okay, you will in a like that. Now we talk about our positions wise properties. You will array colon over. Okay, I say background color okay, and uh, after that, I use you will. Next child odd values background color again I can use the same okay now after this uh, we are using this called ULLI project now we will be using background then color I am using the same white text decoration line 3 which is a checked option ok now after that check before I also want to use it so we just say you will check Before you will ally check colon before content after that position absolute after that border style border color sorry border color I'm just using called white. Then border style solid, then border width, border hyphen width. Border hyphen width, we are using zero, two pixels, zero. Then top ten pixels left pixels, then transform rotate 
45 degrees. Then height 15 pixels. Then width 7 pixels. Now you see this now how they work like in that JavaScript will be applied later on to make it even more better. So we are just getting it ready for that. Okay. After that, we'll be using for close. In this close, we see position absolute. Then right zero. Zero padding four options we are using it here. Okay, then afterwards close over and this close over will be using background color. That's called orange red and uh, color white. This is for close over. Then we're talking about color header. Header will be using background color. T. Then padding. Thirty pixels and thirty pixels. Color Okay. Text align center looking beautiful. Well, this is your header what we have written it now. After that, we will be talking about the header after and input dot header colon after content. Colon and then display table after that clear both that's for header after okay now after this we'll be using for the input Not dot I will be using, rather I will be using directly input for input. Now input, I have to make it in more better way margin 0, then border none, then border radius 0, then width. 75% then padding 10 pixels ok then float left the next option will be font size I am using 16 pixels perfect Nice. So, this is my text box. Okay. Now, we we'll like to talk about called buttons. Okay. It's time to talk about called buttons. We'll be saying dot add btn. So, 
Once again, the condition is going to be remain same. Dog bot call adding 10 pixels. Talk about core width. We say 25%. We say background. Purple. Then we talk about call color. Okay. And we use float. Left. After this float left, we talk about texture line. Center, then font size. We talk about cost 16 pixels. Then talk about cursor with the pointer. Then we talk about code transition. Here we talk about 0 0.3 seconds. And then border radius. Zero. That's it. And in the same time, we talk about call add button. Okay, colon over. Background will change to beat. That's it. Let's check. Awesome. So you see now how exactly it's written now. So my to do list CSS part is over. Well, after this, we're going to talk about our JS file, which is one of the most important area of your code. Now, here, let me close down everything and start creating another file here. One is called app.js. The main calculation goes here. So, from this point onwards, we would like to start working with our property. Uh, whichever we have created here, on the top of that, we will start working with. Okay. So, in my CSS, what are the things that are required that we want to understand? Okay, so we talk about option called li. Li stands for what? List items. So let's start working with var my var list equal to document dot get element by id, or as I will say, document dot element by tag name. And the tag name is what? Hello. It's called list items. Okay. After that, we create a var i is a variable. Then for i equal to zero, i is less than node list. My node list dot length, and then I plus plus. Okay, later on we will create var span equal to document dot create element um, document dot create element which element I want to create it span for the second I'm going to capital it span time I want to create it after that, var text or a second say var txt equal to again document dot create text node and I'll just give the value here by saying forward slash so we create another new text. Okay, later on we just say span dot class name span dot class name equal to close after that span dot append chain txt and then my own list i dot append chain So the first function which we have written it. Okay. So there is a name called node list. This is just a typical logic. In fact, I would not even say the function, it's just a logic which you have written. 
after that uh, what we need to do now is um, we have to start working with our option called var close equal to document dot get element by class name get element by class name name is called what close okay and here say var i and uh, once again for zero is less than close dot length i plus this okay then close i dot on click okay close i dot on click equal to function and now here we say var div equal to this dot parent element this dot parent element and now we say div dot style dot display equal to no okay and now next thing so this is for when you try to click on a close button to hide the current list item okay so you can say current list okay now next what we can develop the code is is to basically add a check symbol okay while clicking on the list item that means if any item which you basically click so what should happen now so when i so it will get strike saying that hey this task is over now so we can say var list equal to Document query selected. New. Okay, and I say dot add event listener on which event on a click event, and then I need to write what function which takes event as a parameter. Okay, here I say if dot target dot class list dot toggle dot toggle here I say check okay and what should happen now but before that I just need to check the condition for if ev dot target dot tag name just wait ev dot target dot ll then what then dot target dot class list dot Toggle check. Okay, and here you pass a value called false. That's it. Okay, now you have to basically go and create what a function for this. So after that, I'm going to create a new function now. Function function. New method. Okay, here we say var ll equal to document dot create element. 
Intel Intel on create it. Hello. Then var input value equal to document dot get element by ID item dot okay and after that we are just calculating this value we are saying var t equal to document dot create text node okay here we pass input value here and I say li dot append child of t like this and here we are saying if input value equal to blank nothing is there then what so in such cases we can say alert this is basically the validation for me alert this field cannot be empty Okay, this field cannot be empty. So this is the first error message we are showing that else condition. In else condition, we have to say document dot get element by ID. Okay, which is a type of item. Okay, so taking a bunch of item which is a type of so else condition which is saying document with element by id rather than item let's pass list here and inside this list we'll say dot append child and here we'll be passing what error case here okay otherwise what would happen we will talk about this option called document with element by id item Item dot value equal to blank. Okay, that's the case now. After that, we just start working with our span tag now. And the span tag will have its own condition now. So first we check about this and now we talk about how span tag now. So we just say for the span we say var. Or span equal to sorry, document dot get element sorry document dot create element document dot create element of type of span Okay, so we are using var span equal to document dot create element of type of span here. So after this span, we'll be talking about our next feature now. So this after this span we yeah, so we are now talking about call var txt equal to once again document dot create text form. We talk about you. So after that, span dot append child txt. Okay, and then in the same line, we'll be using li dot append child dot append child span. And then last but not least, we have to basically iterate through all for i equal to 0, i is less than close dot length and i plus plus. 
then close of type i we are passing it dot on click equal to function and here he is saying var div equal to it is dot parent element okay and div dot style dot display equal to so so friends we are almost ready now because our javascript file is ready after that we'll be talking about how to include it in html to take a look well everybody so we are all set now since we have our application ready with me js is ready css is ready now in our index.html file we have to just check how to apply this js within my code now so in my index.html file i'll just go to my the bottom of my page that is called script script src equal to the name of app.js that's it okay and let's check about my final outcome okay so you can see now the crossbar automatically appeared okay with my application let me try to add another one that is called welcome see it is automatically getting added the moment i click you can see it is called strike that means it is done if i try to click on this it goes off if i click it here strike it click here strike add another it's also working delete it click it again it is uncheck or unstrike now so guys that's it so we are happy like finally we have finished one of our very important project which is a called to do application okay so this time we going to develop another very interesting example using this html javascript and css together and that is called working with a quiz application this is one of the very very interesting project we'll be developing it from the scratch and i'm sure that you will enjoy a lot so what we will do we'll start creating a new folder now first of all i'm going to give the name call html quiz now i'm going to create a three files inside this number 1 i'm going to say index.html index.html then i need another file that is called app.css and the third file i'm going to create inside this that will hold the script related part so we are saying script dot js so we have total number of three files ready with us now from html page we would like to develop this html tags first so we'll go to the html and see so we have got this basic html syntax ready and from here we will start working with the div tag first here onwards div tag so within my div tag we would like to create another div tag okay so the first top level class to this particular div c we haven't created a css but we would like to offer some of the css classes available here so we say dev class equal to container now we have got another dev tag inside this so we will say dev id equal to question hyphen container question hyphen container so that is the name or id of this dev and we say class equal to hide now within this div tag we would like to offer some details but before that we would like to create some embedded div tags inside this so we going to create another div tag here and this div id equal to answer answer hyphen buttons so that's the id name and we would like to offer the class also class equal to btn hyphen grid see again i'm telling you these classes we are just creating it but we would like to use this in our css okay so they are just the normal class names we are giving it right now now inside this dev tag we want to offer some more details 
Now what exactly the details are? Number one, I would like to offer a few buttons now. Button. So we say a button class equal to btn. And after that, we would like to give the name called answer one. Answer one. So that I can have this button class copied three more times. And now we can change the names to two, here three, here four. So we have total number of four answers ready with us. Dev tag is getting closed here. Another div tag is getting closed here. And now here, before the last div tag is getting closed, we would like to create another div tag. Now inside this div, we say class equal to controls. That's another div tag. So under this div, we want to offer few more buttons. Button. Here we say button id equal to start button start hyphen btn. Okay. And then we say class class equal to start hyphen btn space btn and we say start here now I'll just copy this complete line and put it again so rather than giving the start button we say next button and class equal to next hyphen button next hyphen button btn and we will give additional property called height And here we give the value called next. Let me make this S capital and uh, next. So two buttons we have created. After this, div tag is getting closed. After that, I would like to start another div tag. And in this div tag, we will offer class equal to score. Okay. And here we would like to start working with a span, and here we will say span id equal to write hyphen answer or answers I can say. So after that, a div tag is getting closed, and uh, that's it. And at last, the last div tag is getting closed which you can see it right now we would like to use the script tag but one more thing this div tag i would like to close even before so two div tags are getting closed and this is another div tag which is closed at the end and here we want to include a script tag a script src equal to script.js that's it so our html page is almost ready let's review and uh, yes i can see some standard buttons has been created now we would like to look make gifts a better look and feel to this kind of buttons and complete ui by offering some awesome css okay everybody so we'd like to start working with css part now so to work with the CSS, we have to offer few things. Here, we are providing a root, and with this root, some basic settings we are offering it. Number one, hyphen hyphen q hyphen neutral, q hyphen 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 q hyphen neutral. The value we're giving is called two hundred. After that, we're giving call hyphen hyphen q again hyphen wrong. This value we're giving is zero. Then we are saying hyphen hyphen q hyphen correct. 
So these three values we have given followed by body. In this body, we would like to offer few details. Number one, hyphen hyphen hue. This we are making with a variable hyphen hyphen u neutral. The one which we have already declared. Okay, now we will try to provide padding. So this padding we are giving zero. Next property is margin. Margin will also remain zero. After that display. none after that not display i would say none instead it is better we can have flex after that width we are providing width almost 100 followed by height so height we are providing is called once again 100 okay now we have called justify contents. This justify contents I can say center. Perfect. Going forward, align items. Here we can say center again. Now background color. Which color you would like to give it? So we can just use this option called HSL. In this, we will be uh, would like to use this var. Again, this in this var we are using hyphen hyphen hue and uh, followed by 100% comma 20% these things and this is style we want to we would like to use in my index.html page so within my head tag well in index.html file how you would like to refine the styles so we always use link link css so the value is automatically style.css but we would like to change to app.css that's it now we'll see the final outcome now it looks better Okay, so it is only for the background, nothing else it is impacting. Now we want to offer few more things into my CSS. It is only for the body. Now we would like to go ahead with the body code dot correct. Body dot correct. We are providing hue var and here we would like to offer hyphen hyphen wrong and also sorry not wrong just for correct and we can use body dot wrong body dot wrong so same thing I'd like to copy. So rather than saying correct, we're using wrong here. Well, these two properties we have defined. Going forward, we would like to start working with a container. Container. Inside my container, I would like to offer width. Basic thing. That we are providing 800 pixels followed by max width this max would be 80 percent now going forward background color background color we are offering white that always looks better followed by border radius border radius that we are providing five pixels after this padding this padding will be 10 pixels followed by box shadow this box shadow we can say 0 0 
10 pixels, 2 pixels. So this is we have applied for the container and container is used right over here. Let's see. Okay, that looks better. So this is where it comes under my container. Now we would like to offer the buttons. Here in our CSS, we want to now offer the button colors. So dot btn hyphen grid. Well, in index.html file, so we have a call button grid. This button grid we would like to start from here. Btn grid. Btn grid display grid followed by grid hyphen template columns so here we are saying repeat in this repeat we are saying two comma auto then we would like to offer the gap this gap will be the 10 pixels followed by margin that will be the 20 pixels and then 0. This is for my button grid. Let's see. Awesome. So that looks pretty nice. Now going forward we would like to apply the styles of my button. So how my button will looks like in. Well button grids we have created it. Now we would like to go ahead with the buttons. So dot btn followed by the details. So, hyphen hyphen hue, var, we'll be using neutral, okay. going forward we would like to use border, so this border we want to use 12 pixels or I would say 1 pixel and then solid and uh, hsl values we would like to give it once again var hyphen hyphen u followed by 100% 30% okay so these are the values for border followed by background color so we would like to use the same details now we would like to use background color so in background color we will just use hsl rather than this so hyphen hue 100 percent and 50 percent okay followed by border radius border radius 5 pixels now padding padding just 5 pixels and 10 pixels then color this color will be white for sure and the outline outline we are using is none last option cursor so cursor we will be using pointer as you should see so these are the details are available which we want to use it for my button now the last option we want to use it for the button hover dot btn dot or hover and for this per hover we want to say border color this border color we would like to use black that's it let's see awesome so this looks pretty nice as you can see right now here 
well so this is how my initial looks like okay now i also want to change this start button and next button both so here we want to use dot start hyphen btn and also for dot next hyphen btn common look and feel for both font size one dot five rem next font weight now this font weight you want to give bold followed by padding this padding is b the 10 pixels and 20 pixels followed by 10 pixels 20 pixels next cursor will be as usual pointers now we want to go ahead with the controls with controls we set display flex followed by justify contents this justify contents i will say center followed by align items and here we say center and uh, last option which is left is called height this height is a display none that's it let's check this out well so this will be visible to me so the moment i said start then only the other buttons will be visible so this is how my program is well my css is all set well let's get start working with the script part now this is a major part of your main code development so here we will start working with this const and here we will say start button equal to document dot get element by id and here we will give the name call start hyphen btn that's the name like this i just copy this line make it available here like we have a call start button we have a call next button and here next button like here another one here we change the name and give the name call question container element container element question container element document get element by id here we give the name call question hyphen container question hyphen container because this is already there you see question hyphen container is already there We're using question hyphen container like this we would like to use one more and that is called question element question element documented cut element by id here we will be passing question followed by we want to use answer button element answer buttons element answers or i can say answer buttons element answer hyphen buttons answer hyphen buttons so naming convention must be chosen very carefully now 
we will provide option called shuffle question because we want every time the questions to be get shuffled shuffled questions shuffled questions current question index shuffle questions and current question index and we would like to provide one variable called let quiz score equal to 0 so we created those variables now once it is done we want to basically go ahead and start creating a set of questions for my application so here we want to provide the questions so we say const questions const questions equal to array first question which I would like to create it here is called question now here we will say JavaScript framework so which of these is a which one of these I would say which one of these is a JavaScript framework so this is my question now okay so I would like to have answers for sure so here we are providing answers so what answers we would like to provide so in this answers, the first answer I can say like this. Here I say text first will be Python. Python. Okay. Python. Answer is true or false. Correct. False. So it will be the false. Copy. Now let's change the value. Here I say Django. Correct. False. Third is React. So I can say true. Last I'm keeping it called false as you should see. So like this we have created a question and four answers. Okay, so we're all set now. So here after that we want to create few more okay so once again I would like to bring some questions now and related answers so I just copy this first so second question I can say who is the Prime Minister of India so we can have two answers available okay talk about Narendra Modi the value is called what true second we're gonna give the name call we 
which value is called false. So I've taken the values like this. And we can take one more just for the demo purpose. So like here. Next is called what is 4 multiplied by 3. I can have many answers. So I'm just making the first is called 6, which is false, second is 12. Like that, total we have created 3. Okay, so we all are set with this multiple questions. Okay, now once it is done, we would like to offer one function here. Okay, and what that function would be? The function would be known as called clear status class. Function clear status class. It takes one parameter called element. And here we will say element dot class list dot remove element dot class list dot remove correct and uh, once again I copy the same line wrong. So we have two options available call what right and what wrong. Now going forward we want to have few more functions to be attached. There is only one function we have attached that is called clear status class. Now we would like to add one more function here call function set status class. Okay, and here we pass two parameters now. One is called element, and second is called correct. Two parameters we are passing it now. Element and correct. First, we are calling this function called clear status class. Is a function which we have created pass element, followed by we are saying if correct then element dot class list dot add correct okay else we use the same option what will you try to add wrong here? So this is how we would like to apply right or wrong. So this is a set status class which we have it now. Followed by the most important function which we are going to use it right now here is called your select answer. So you have to basically select the answer. So this is a little bigger function. So let's try to understand function select answer here we we'll pass e as in parameter and from here we will use const select selected button selected button equal to e dot target number one second const correct equal to selected button dot data set selected button dot data set dot correct now going forward we'll be calling this set status class function 
in the set status class we will be passing document dot body as the first parameter and correct is the second parameter okay now we are using array dot from and here in this array dot from we are using answers button element dot children okay followed by dot for each here we are using this button as in parameter now here what i will do we are using this option called set status class first parameter will be what a button then button dot data set dot we can give the value called what correct okay so this is how we are using this array now we'll be utilizing the main evaluated value called if shuffle question dot length if shuffle questions dot length is greater than current question index plus one then what then we are saying next button dot class list dot remove and here we will say hide so this will be hidden okay else else condition says what start button dot inner text okay start button dot inner text equal to restart okay and next is called start button dot class list dot remove what we need to remove hide part that's it okay and here we are using this option called if selected button dot data set equal to correct then quiz score plus plus and document dot get element by id here we are providing write hyphen answers followed by dot inner HTML equal to quiz score so whatever the score will be after selecting the correct answer this will be available to the user okay now the next thing which we're going to develop it is basically your reset state function reset state function reset state so what we're going to offer here we are saying clear status class document dot body okay here we are saying next button dot class list dot add height okay now we are using this while option now answers button element dot first child so here i will be using answers button element dot remove child here we have a call dot remove child and here we will be giving answers button element 
dot first child so these are the functions are used right now we haven't called those functions but we'll be calling those functions one by one but this is something which we wanted to start with okay well reset state is already set now going forward we would like to start working with the show questions so that the user can start seeing the question we are saying function show question show question the first parameter will be question and uh, from here onwards we would like to use a question element so we have a call question element dot in a text equal to question dot question now followed by questions dot answer question dot answers dot for each and here I would like to use we are passing what answer as a parameter now here we like to create a button called const button equal to document dot get sorry document dot create element I'd like to create a button now okay after that we are saying button dot in a text you have to set the value equal to answer dot text then followed by button dot class list dot add here we are offering BTA okay now we are saying if the condition is answer dot correct if answer is correct then what then button dot dataset dot correct equal to answer dot correct okay now the next thing is we are using button dot add event listener attaching the listener to this event which event on click event second parameter will be select answer then answer button element dot append child of what button so this is your show questions followed by what is the next question it will appear so here we say function set next question next question mm -hmm. here function set next question here in this next question we are just saying reset state the function we are calling it and saying show question And here we are passing this shuffle questions and we are passing this current question index that is what the set next question is offering it to me now the last function which is left that is called start game how the game will start function start game and here the main magic begin here we say start button dot class list dot add and here height after that shuffle questions 
equal to we have a call questions dot sort okay here we say math dot random and five we are passing this value okay after that we are saying current question index initially we are giving zero right now after that question container element which we have already defined dot class list dot remove height okay and then we are calling set next question which is a function we are calling it and initializing our quiz score with the value called zero well start game is ready next thing which we have to start with our button so here we are saying start button dot add event listener here in this on my click event i will try to call this function start game first thing now next we will be calling next button dot add event listener on click on click we are using okay so here we are calling current question index current question index plus plus and set next question that's it so we are mostly done with our code script.js we have basically already initialized there okay so the values will be kept automatically so most of the things are now ready with us okay so our javascript is almost ready index.html file is there and app.css is also ready with us now let's finally see how my overall look and feel really looks like in so just go here and try to refresh and check on a button called start awesome i could see the first question appears automatically which of these a javascript framework if i select as usual my correct answer score react now you can see is automatically making the rest of them as a red and now giving me the next button now as a prime minister of india i'm saying narendra modi great next and i say Four multiply by three is at twelve. I say next, and which of those used in mobile app development? Flutter and Flask. I say Flask. It says Flutter, and now you can see the application looks perfectly fine, and it gives me the restart now, and that's it. So this is how, dear friends, your project is now completely working, and expected as the way it was designed for. When I once again restart and you can say start button now it's giving me 4 multiply by 3 that means it is once again have taken random question so we have decided to basically develop another very interesting project in javascript that is known as called calculator application like you have seen earlier some projects like in tic tac toe you talk about snake game you talk about the quiz application this time we're going to introduce you another very interesting project using this javascript html and css so called calculator application so let's get started. Let me try to delete first those files which we really do not need it now. Uh, we delete those all. Yeah. Now I will be creating a new folder now and give the name called Calculator App. And in this Calculator App, once again we need some new files which is called index.html. And we also need one more that is called app.css. 
and another one that is called app.js. So these three files required. Now, first of all, I would start with index.html file where we'll be creating a template of my code. Now, let me go and create this template. And here, I have a got body with me. Let's start with the first tag here that is called h1. And this h1 we are giving the name called calculator. Calculator. Yeah. So that will be my h1 heading. After that, we will start working with the div tag. Now within this div, I would have to create lot many classes. I may not have lot many CSS classes, but we can give some classes here. So we can say class equal to container. Okay. So within this div tag, we are going to create a table now because I want to organize it. So I am starting with the table. Within this table, the tr tag and within this tr tag, I need a td. Now in this td, I need few things called call span equal to 3 as a value. And here I want to offer the text box input type equal to text. Okay, input up to text id equal to give the name called result. That will be the final outcome while uh, pressing all the different buttons id equal to result and class equal to screen. Remember, I haven't created those CSS classes, but, but we are giving some names, but later on we can utilize it while creating those CSS classes. Table data is getting closed. Let's get started with another TD. Now, inside this TD, we need another text box. Input type equal to text. And uh, here in this input I put text, sorry, I would like to better say button because I will be having buttons. Okay. Input I equal to button value equal to C and uh, on click equal to. I may not have any function right now, but yes, I can create. A function but let me give some dummy name here I'm saying clear screen okay so that will be the function we get called and after that class equal to clear yeah so this is my button tag after this the td tag is getting closed after the td tag the table row is also getting closed after the table row which is getting close, we're going to start working with another table row. Okay, and in this table row, I'm going to create one more TD. So let's go and create another TD here. And inside this TD, I'll be having another button to be get created. So I'll just say this is my another button now. Input equal to button value equal to one. On click equal to, I will be calling another function called display. Okay, and uh, inside this, we are giving the value called one. Okay, and class equal to member. Class equal to number. And here, after that, the TD tag is getting closed. Okay, now you have to start another TD tag here. Okay. Like that, you have to keep on creating the multiple buttons. So let me copy and place another table data. Now here, again, value equal to 2, on click equal to display, give the value called 2, and class equal to what? Number. Like that, I will keep on creating multiple buttons, but first check how it actually looks like. It. Now I can see the buttons, like in C, 1, 2, 3. But yes, I'm going to create few more buttons one after another. Okay, so I'll go here and create few more buttons. So this is where the table data is getting closed. Okay, I'll copy this and paste it again. So I have to create the button like in 
3, 4, something like that. So after this 2, we are giving the value called 3. Yeah, I'll give the value called 3. So value equal to 2, value equal to 3, display 3. And then afterwards, just giving the value called forward slash. And here also you're going to give the value called forward slash. And here, class equal to operator. Operator. After that, you have to give the value called 4. And then followed by 5, 6, 7. So here we give 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. After 6, we are giving call minus. Okay, once again it will be what? Type of operator. Okay, after this minus, we will be talking about call 7. Then we have to have an 8. Okay, 9. Okay, after that, we are giving call plus. And display plus class equal to operator operator okay so here you can see the table data is getting closed and here the table row is also getting closed and after this table row you can start working with another table row here and uh, after this table row we can start working with again td let me have this again inside this i'll be giving the option called decimal which is value equal to dot and here we give the value called decimal decimal okay now display zero so after giving this dot, we to basically take what? The value 0, which we have input now. We will be talking about value called 0. So here, the decimal value we have given it, td is getting closed. Let me have the another one. Zero. 0. So like that, we have to give this now. After that, will be once again taking this and this time rather than giving this zero we'll be using this call as a button and value equal to equal to or click equal to solve okay and in this solve we'll not be passing anything it will like a normal function and class equal to equal okay so Table data is getting closed, so we will be using another table data now. So here it will be the button only. Okay, we will be using value equal to multiplication. Display plus check, and here we will be using operator. Okay, so table data is getting closed, table row is getting closed, table is also getting closed here. Okay, so your div tag is also getting closed here. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's the only thing which we wanted to make. Let me try to refresh and check. Awesome. So we have got uh, all those necessary calculator behavior which uh, we wanted to reveal. Okay, now our next statement will be once we are giving this C, then we have a call 1, 2, 3. And then forward slash followed by 456 will come down. Okay, so 
let me check whether we have used 6 or not ok so we haven't used 6 so let me check here 4, 5, 6 so let me go back here 4, 5, 6 let me copy this and paste it later on before minus six equal to number. Okay, so we're almost set now. So we are having this uh, look and feel. In this way, giving one, two, three, four, five, six, and after this we have a call minus and then plus related behavior. So we are all set now, and after that we'll be basically applying. The CSS as well as the JavaScript look towards my code. Okay, thank you. Well, everybody, we are all good to go now. But I just want to first check whether my uh, this outlook is looking properly or not. See what my expectation is after one, two, three, forward slash. I really want to bring four, five, six to the next, and then seven, eight, nine, and again forward slash. But I can think this is absolutely unorganized. So after this, when we say this uh, forward slash which we have used after hyphen. Okay, your TD is getting closed here. Okay, so here the TR I also want to close here. Okay, and after this TR I also want to start another TR here. Okay, so that I can put them into the another level now. So under this TR I can use this TD now. So after this minus, after 4, 5, 6, minus. Once again, I would like to start another table row here. Okay, so that it lets go to the next row. So here, after TD, we're closing this TR and starting another TR now. Okay, we're starting another TR. After that, we talk about 7, 8, 9. Okay. Plus, see here, talking about 7, 8, 9 plus, here the table row is getting closed and it is starting right now like this. See, that looks better now. Okay, but still, few more things which I would like to make it even more organized, but that's not a problem. We will do it little later on. Okay, because you can see 8 is missing right now. So, here, 7, we copy this equal to 8, 8, yeah, that looks better now, so now they are basically completely organized, so the moment I expect my application, so we have a call dot here, then 0, then equal to, and then we have a call multiplication, okay, so looks better now, now I just would like to perform the overall look and feel, so I need to go ahead and use what CSS, because without CSS, I really can't utilize this in a proper way. So I have to start working with the CSS front now. In CSS front, how to start? First, we will go back to my code. And here in my CSS, we will start working with font family. But before font family, I would like to start with the body part now. Body. Background color. I am using called T. That looks nice okay so i will be using this app.css in my html to see the look how it is being appeared right now so in my index.html file on the top under my head section link style sheet Okay, now see, it looks better now. Going forward, in my CSS, we want to use some h1 color too. So here, we would like to use the h1 text align center color 
white margin top margin top would like to use 50 pixels this is for h1 let's check perfect so it is now coming in between next statement will be called screen so we say dot screen so in this screen we use the background color background color gray and after that border sorry border solid black and the two pixels after that color white font size medium next width we are using this 100% then we talk about cursor we will be saying what the default cursor is ok then padding we would like to say 10 pixels and then margin say auto then margin bottom that I'll be using 10 pixels so is the proper alignment okay look that's how exactly we want that's for a screen where the exact outcome will be visible to me and rest of the details will be showing you one by one now we'll be talking about called input okay input type equal to button for input type equal to button okay input equal to button of type what over the mode i over on the button i say background color change to what white or else i can say white smoke okay and uh, when the button is active what i want let me copy input up to the button and here i say active and this color should be orange red like this you can see now how it is basically looking like it okay active the color will be like this Okay, I'll be talking about called operators. Operator should behave different. So I'm saying dot operator. In this operator, we are saying background color, background color orange. Okay, then padding. I want five pixels. Okay, then I want color. That should be black. After this, I'm using called border. Sorry. That border, I'm using this called solid. And then black. And two pixels. After this, width, I'm using 100%. Then height height we are using 40 pixels. Then cursor it has to be pointed to it. Okay, that's it. Let's check. Perfect. So they should turn back to what? To your orange color. And uh, you can see the moment I take my cursor on the turns to white perfect and now those who are type number i also want to change them so for number yeah. for number i want to say the same option padding i want 5 pixels 
then I need height of type 40 pixels then I say color it looks I want to say called black then border border I want solid black and two pixels solid black and two pixels then width I would say point width I would say hundred percent and cursor once again point that is for number let's check awesome so they looks nice now we left with few other type of options like in dot and equal to okay that I'm talking about called decimal for decimal I need to have a different options with me okay so let me try to copy this paste it and I say for decimal so for decimal background color will be light blue padding 5 pixels color black Border solid, okay. Black two pixels with hundred percent height forty pixels. Find the cursor pointer. Perfect. Okay, looks nice. But I have changed the color to light blue now. Now I talk about clear. Okay. Now come back and say clear. Okay. In this color, background color is I am changed to light salmon light salmon padding 5 pixels color black border same width 100% height 40 pixels fine so cursor pointer fine margin auto and margin bottom margin bottom Let's check. Perfect. Now it looks beautiful. Okay. Now, here, after giving these details, we're talking about called equal part, dot equal. So for dot equal also, I'm just copying the same. So we have a call background color, adding color. Just change to light green. Light green. And uh, after this, since it is a equal, so we say padding 5 pixels is okay, color black, fine border, fine width 100%, height 40 pixels, color and cursor pointers. Just I don't need to. This is for dot equal. And I want for container. Container. In this container, width I want forty percent. Width forty percent. Background color white. Okay. Now. Here, padding is 15 pixels. So, display block. So, first of all, we will call width. We say display block, which we're taking margin. Okay. In margin, we say 100 pixels. Auto. Okay. Now align cells equal to center. Okay. Border radius. Border radius, which is say 10 pixels. Okay. Now we say box shadow. Box shadow 5 pixels. Black. 
Ready? So these are the details I have it now. Okay, we have it. Background color, we are taking it now. Align cell, display block, border radius, padding, then and all. Padding 15 pixels, we have given already. I don't need to give it again. Margin, okay, fine. Box shadow, let's try. Awesome, so it's looking beautiful now. Okay, so this where exactly my application works like that. And table when we talk about here we saying width hundred percent. Okay, that's it. Super. So it's now giving me the proper look of how my application should behave like it. Just see about the container what we have done. With forty percent we are taking background color. Let's bring it below. Then align self, display block, okay, margin, okay, and uh, border radius, and uh, fine. So I think we're all good now. So that's it. So we'll try and implement the JavaScript part. Well, everyone, so our CSS file is ready, our HTML is ready. It's time to just uh, go ahead and talk about my. Final portion that is called JS part where I want to basically perform some calculators. Now here I just say function display function display which takes var as in parameter and say document dot get element by id. Here I'm saying result okay dot value okay plus equal to where whatever we are adding it just it basically try to apply calculation on the top of that okay that is a function after that we have another function is available here called function solve here in the solve we just use the value called let x equal to Document dot get element by id result okay dot value sorry dot value okay and say let y equal to perform the calculations for the using one function called eval and type x is in parent. Now the next statement will be again document dot get it one by id result dot value equal to y. Okay. Now later on I'll like to use another function here function. Clear screen, and here we say document dot get it in by id. Here we say result dot value equal to like that. So clear screen, solve, and display. Three functions are associated with me, and these three functions are the part of this JavaScript file which I'll be calling it at the end before the water tag get closed. So here, script equal to app dot js. That's it. Okay, let's try to execute now. Here, two we give me the values. I will say plus 6 equal to 8. Absolutely, I say C is clear that's clear. 6 divided by 2 equal to 3. Awesome. So friends, your calculator application is ready. Congratulations to all.
So it is a very simplest form which we have developed. This is your HTML, which is a template for you. This is the CSS, which is your complete the area of like how the look and feel will look like in of this template beautification. And here last we have a JS, which is smaller logic but really meaningful. Okay. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the another very exciting project for our development in JavaScript that is known as called WeatherPro. It is in a continuation to the series of the previous project what we have developed in JavaScript and this is once again a very competitive project I am going to present to you which is called WeatherPro where I would like to offer you the real time weather application into your browser taken from the real time weather applications. Okay, so let's get started with the new development of our application, which is called a weather probe. Now, once again, compared to the previous project, what we have seen, these projects were working more a kind of static in nature, where like you talk about snake game, you talk about TikTok, to or other type of games like an online quiz, where the data was very much static in nature, but we were presenting the data in the form of more dynamic in nature. This time, this project we are presenting you while connecting with a real-time weather application where I'll be making a one REST API call or else you can say asynchronous call and since JavaScript is working as a what a pure asynchronous nature you will be enjoying the way how the JavaScript can communicate with your backend load the data and represent the records in a very very beautiful manner so once again we would need this VS Code Editor only just to develop our code and uh, once again for developing a presentation part we'll be using html for formatting part we'll be using css and to make some dynamic update we'll be using javascript now here i'm going to create a new file name called index.html parallelly i just want one more that is known as called app.css and another file we need it and uh, that is called your js file so we're saying app.js file so total number of three files are available to us now i'll start working with an html now and here we'll start with this html templates now here first of all i would like to load my css file which i do not have right now but certainly i can use it okay so i can just say link Ariel equal to style sheet and href equal to app dot css well that is my css location now i just want to create some this link Ariel i would better use inside my head tag that will be the more convenient place now in my body I want to have some of the div tags and there I can decide where the weather to be displayed. So I can just start with my div tag now. With my div tag I say class equal to. I can just create a class which later on I can offer a different size of or different type of style. So we can say container. So we are saying div class equal to container. Now within a div tag we will like to use another div tag which is a nested one so this div will have another class called class equal to app hyphen title app hyphen title in the same div tag we can use this our typical paragraph tag and here we say weather info weather info now after this paragraph tag we want to have a text box because i would expect a client to enter the detail on which city or for which city he or she would like to get the details so we can say input some properties like id equal to search second type equal to text next placeholder equal to enter the city next 
auto complete i am saying auto complete of the reason because i do not want the previous value user can see in this case we can say auto complete of i do not want any auto complete in this okay now here it is getting close now after that we also want the locations for that i may use some of the png files and and all but right now i just want to display the details of the user like which city he belongs to and accordingly i can display the records right in your application so for that i really need some of the div tags once again where i can display the details of this particular city so i'm just having this only text box let me go and go back and check how it looks so i have a call enter the city so here i'll be picking up the city and somewhere down the line i have to display the records so after this div we can also have some of the locations to be displayed so we can just use the notifications and uh, also the location where you want the details to be displayed okay so we can use div class class equal to temperature value temperature hyphen value okay so div class equal to temperature hyphen value inside this i'll be using paragraph tag and here in my paragraph i'll say hyphen and this degree centigrade or whatever you want to display it here and uh, we'll use a span tag within this and show in degree centigrade that's it and if you want to define the temperature description after this div tag we can use another div tag and inside my div tag i can define the temperature description okay so we can say div class equal to temperature hyphen description temperature hyphen description and within this i'll be using what a paragraph tag here i'll be displaying all the description so right now that is the only thing which i want let me check okay so it's here right now so now let me try to collect the value from the client and perform some javascript tag within this okay now it's time for us to go back and try to bring some of the css features into my code now now few things i would like to say is i have basically downloaded some fonts which i would like to use it in my application and i also have some of the icons which i would like to use during my application presentation so there are some png files are there which i have downloaded from the internet just to bring more beautiful experience towards my application development well this is another background image which is called bg.jpg which i would like to make it as a background of my existing application so i'll start with my css and see how this css can really bring some new features to my code well first thing i need to have a call font face so to make this font face we are using this statement name call here at the rate font face and uh, i like to use font family font family i'm using mont serif okay it is already there with me mont serif and the url what is looking forward for so we are saying src url and i'm saying under the font so we have a file called ttf okay that is called bold.ttf that is the file which is there with me next thing so for every location i want to use the font family font hyphen family i want to use same monster and uh, the next thing is like in my body so in my body few details like background image i need url and in this url we can say bg.jpg in my background 
next thing is background color that i needed still blue then i need height i'll say 500 pixels next your background position this i needed is center next is your background repeat i say no repeat next is your background size this i'm saying cover this is my body part okay let's check okay looks awesome now you see this now this is how my weather info is looking like it you can see like the background looks awesome now now next thing we require a container so we are saying dot container container we say width width 50 percent next background color which is using white next we needed to see your align self that will be center display if we block margin so in margin we can say 100 pixels after that border radius border radius we are saying 10 pixels and then padding bottom this padding bottom will be 50 pixels then box shadow this box shadow we are giving 5 pixels 10 pixels 20 pixels and black this will be with my container so index.html file we have a called container now okay looks awesome now so this is where exactly the details will be okay now after this CSS container we have used we can talk about called title you can say hyphen title inside this we will say width will be 100% then height will be 150 pixels then border radius 10 pixels 10 pixels then we need display display we need flex and then we need align items this align items we are just saying center next we need justify content that will be the justify content we just center then flex direction would be column so this option we are using for our tool name called what app hyper title okay so here in my index.html file we have a called div class equal to what app hyphen title equal to weather info let's check okay so this is the another we have used that is called app title now we need to use it for paragraph inside my app title what should be alignment for my paragraph so here this app title app title is space p but it should be the class so we are saying dot and there also we have to use what dot because both have to be the class type okay so here you can see now there is a difference i forgot to add dot and now you can see it looks better comparatively paragraph so once again 
in my paragraph, I'll be having text align, center, padding. I want 15 pixels. Then I need margin. Margin would be 0 and auto, followed by font size. <coughs> font size. This I'm saying scroll 1.2. Yeah. This position. Then color. Here giving hash value call 333. Okay. Now here. Okay. So some changes in a paragraph. Well, going forward for the search. Because if you remember, we have an index.html file. We have a call id equal to what? Search. So here in my app.css, I have to use hash search. Okay. So this search conditions, I want to use it. Now, Inside my search, I need few things. One is called display. I need block. After that, I need margin left. Auto. Margin right. Auto. Width. I'm looking forward for 5 pixels. Height. That I'm looking forward for 20 pixels. Then border radius. I'm looking for, for, for 5 pixels. Then outline. That's called none. Let me say border. Okay. In this border, what we can say 3 pixels. Space solid. Okay, and once again, see. That's what. Let's check. So, this is actually the text box. So, once again, search you've used display block, margin, left auto, margin right auto, width 5 pixels, width. Padding, sorry, one thing I said, padding should be 5 pixels, width should be 40%, that's why it is smaller, width it will be 40%, let's check, yeah, that's look better now, okay, so my text box is now ready, I'll be having some of the details for the notifications also. So, what I need for the notifications, let me go back and create a class for notification. So, dot notification, okay. Now, in the notifications, I would like to give some value called background color. And in this background color, we are just giving white. And after that, we are saying display. And we are saying none. This is for notification and followed by the notification we are talking about the same notification ok and followed by its paragraph we are giving the color first of all we are saying color color is basically red ok else if you want to give maroon it will be maroon and uh, after this the next property we are taking is called font size font size we are taking is called 1.2 em followed by margin margin we are taking is 0 after that text align center padding 10 pixels zero so this is for notification p and then the weather container okay in my weather container i will say width 
hundred percent. Sorry, yeah, width hundred percent height. Height we giving two sixty pixels. Or if to you two fifty pixels if you want. Background color. This background color we are giving is called once again white. And uh, followed by margin top. 20 pixels 20 pixels this is for weather container now for the weather icon weather hyphen icon I'm saying width is 100% and uh, height 128 pixels just to give in a better look now the next thing we are using dot weather hyphen icon space img here we can display none and uh, sorry display not none I will say rather block display block and margin giving zero space auto this for icon and location icon if I want to give then location hyphen icon this location icon I can say with same width height so width I'm giving is 100% then height I'm giving 40 pixels and then we give this option called Adding the 10 pixels. So it's for location icon. Now, followed by location icon, we are also giving call location icon img. Okay, dot location hyphen icon space img. Here we're giving the value called display block. Display block width. We're giving is called 32 pixels, and then we're looking for our margin. Margin would be 10 pixels and auto. Then cursor. So cursor will be pointer for sure, and then we require padding. Padding we're looking for about for five pixels. Followed by border. Border we are looking forward for steel blue. Steel blue, solid, and two pixels. Then border radius. Border radius. We are looking forward for ten pixels. And followed by your color, steel blue. So these are the look and feel we have to basically offer it for my current application, which I yet to discuss in my next development. Then I'll be having some small small properties here. Okay, and uh, those properties are nothing but to give you the details of like. Uh, temperature values so we say dot temperature hyphen value okay this temperature hyphen value we can give it is 100% and uh, height we give this called 60 pixels Okay, this is for temperature value. Let me copy this again. And uh, I'm giving this temperature value space paragraph. Here, I'm gonna give padding zero, margin zero, then color. Which color are you looking forward for? So we can just say dark gray.
okay or any color which you're looking forward for it's up to you now but if you want you can change the color also to the another one we're giving this call hash 293 okay 251 okay that is the more perfect color for this development now font size 4em then followed by text align and once again center so this is for temperature value p we haven't used much but you can see now it looks somewhere in much more better way okay that is called temperature value p then you can use a temperature value span here dot temperature value span space span and here we remove the additional dot now within this span say color once again same and font size this is for span and in the same temperature description paragraph you can use it dot temperature hyphen description description space p so this will be having the padding of 8 pixels then margin 0 followed by color same color the one which we have used it earlier after this color just a text align center font size 1.2 em this is for temperature description okay last which is available for your location so let me give the location now dot location space p here we can say margin 0 then padding 0 then color same color i would like to use after this color text align and font size we'll copy text align center and here we'll be giving some different value called 0 0.8 okay and last which is left with called div in that relative here position i'll be using absolute top from top i'm using 600 pixels okay and right i'm using 120 pixels that's it okay so all set so you can see now here we have to basically offer the details how my pictures will be taken it up so this is what my CSS now we'll be applying some of the CSS into my applying the CSS into my HTML to see how it really looks like it. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Okay, so we have seen some of the CSS classes we have introduced in my HTML. We have used this. Uh, Autocomplete equal to off, then we have used tip class equal to temperature value. Okay, if you just check carefully, we have used this temperature and then we have used temperature hyphen value. But before that, we would like to use some other properties too. Okay, after this autocomplete equal to off, we want to use uh, another div class. Okay, before my previous div tag is closed here. So here, after this, we would like to use another div tag, div, 
here in my div i'll say class equal to location hyphen icon location hyphen icon okay and here i'll be using img src equal to what under icons i'm using the file name called location dot png and alt equal to we leave it as it is a blank okay now here the div tag is getting closed okay now there's another div tag is getting closed here so two div tags are closed after that we'll be using another div class for notification here div class equal to notification div class equal to notification and this div tag is getting closed right here okay now another div for the weather condition another div tag and here we say class equal to weather hyphen condition weather hyphen what a condition or I can say weather hyphen container whichever so I can say weather hyphen container under this weather container I like to use another div for weather icon div for class equal to weather hyphen icon weather hyphen icon and within this I want to use another IMG SRC equal to once again icons slash unknown dot PNG. Okay, div tag is getting closed. So after this div tag is closed, I'm gonna use uh, temperature value. So the temperature value is anyways used here. If you see raising call temperature value after the first div tag is closed you see like temperature value we have used after that the paragraph tag and the temperature hyphen description p after the p there's a div tag is getting close okay and after this we are using div class equal to location so we want to use div class equal to location and uh, within this location we want to use one more paragraph tag with this hyphen after this paragraph it's close this div tag this div tag and another div tag three div tags are closed that's it and at the last before my body tag is closed, I would like to use a script src equal to app dot js. That's it. Let's check. Great. My application looks pretty beautiful now. So this I sh want to be displayed only when I don't find the weather and the location and all. So look and feel is absolutely good and now i'll start working on my javascript front okay so let's go ahead and start writing our javascript code so in just javascript code first of all i need few things uh first thing what i need is called individual elements or individual properties of my application i need const icon element icon element equal to document dot query selector and i'll be using the name call dot weather hyphen icon okay now copy this now we will call icon element we can say location icon call location icon here we are saying dot 
location hyphen icon now next i need it is called temp element here we are using the property called dot temperature hyphen value space p next we are looking for what for desc element which is called description here we giving temperature hyphen description hyphen temperature hyphen description space what p then location element okay we need location element and we use dot location space p next we need notification element notification element and here we going to give the call notification notification so four properties we have taken so we are selecting all the elements next statement what we going to talk about see this statement is all about selecting the elements the next step we are talking about call get the input field so we are saying var input equal to document dot get element by id okay we given the give the name call search which is the name or id of my text box let city equal to blank next we going to give score let latitude equal to 0.0, .0. we are initializing this value and let longitude let longitude equal to again 0.0, .0. so we are getting the coordinates right now so this is how to get the input fields next we want to apply the events here we are saying input the variable dot add event listener the variable what we are talking about which event listener we are talking about key up key up and what event you want to apply so we are saying function with a parameter name called what event and now we would like to attach the logic now we are saying if what is the condition event dot key code equal to 30 okay then that means number 13 is basically the enter see the key code means what 13 13 represent the enter keyword so event dot key code equal to what 13 so we are saying event dot prevent default why we are using this because i do not want my page to be get refreshed just to avoid this we are using this and after that we are saying city equal to input dot value now you will be using this another function because i do not have function created otherwise i have to call the function name called get search weather and be passing this as a parameter so we are using get search whether i do not have this function i yet to create this and pass it here as a what city and we say console dot log city whatever we are basically printing it okay so that is the first thing later on we need to get the data so to get the data we are just using this variable name called const whether equal to const whether equal to curly braces after that we are saying whether dot temperature equal to this and which temperature conditions you want i'm saying unit of type what celsius i 
I want it in Celsius. Put it in double quotes. Okay. So next statement will be getting the details in Kelvin. I'm saying const Kelvin equal to value of the Kelvin is what 273. And after that, const C. Ultimately, what we need is we need to interact with our backend API from where I will get or receive the updated weather applications. Okay, now to get this, I'll be using one very popular API here that is known as called openweathermap.org. This is a very, very popular app which people use it and it's used and trusted by many companies. Clear? So here, what you can do this openweathermap.org. So you need to basically first of all get yourself registered because if any third party application is interacting, it requires that particular unique API key. Since as a visitor, you really can't get it unless you register yourself. So I have my API key with me. So I'll go here, class me for the registration. So I already signed up. So if you're not, you need to sign it. There's an API key for me, which I need to copy. And this API key, I'll be using it in my project. So I just use this property called const key equal to, to paste my key here. Okay. After this pasting the key, but make sure that you rather using my key, you use your key. Otherwise this application sometimes won't work. So I'm basically trying to use this tool name called geolocation. I'm saying if geolocation, okay, in navigator, navigator is, you know, there's a browser object model element. So here we are using navigator, okay, navigator dot geolocation dot get current position in which I'll be passing the first parameter name called what set position and second parameter will be show error in case if any error is received okay else in this else condition what would happen I'm using this statement name called notification element. You see this notification element dot style dot notification element dot get elements by class name. But I don't need this, rather, I will use what the style dot display equal to block then i'll be using the same notification element dot inner html equal to you're gonna use a paragraph saying what browser doesn't support so you have to enable the current location of yours. Okay, that's where exactly. So after that, we have to basically set what the user position. Okay, if the user is having that support available. So after this location, we'll be just using another function here. Function set position. It will, I'll be taking position as a parameter and take latitude, latitude equal to position dot chords, chords for coordinates dot latitude, okay, like that. 
longitude equal to what position dot chords dot longitude after this we'll be using this function called what get weather so this get weather will be the function in which we'll be passing it so this function will be soon seen i'll be having it defined below but as of now we are just saying get weather and in which this we are passing latitude and longitude that's it so we have this function name called what set position in which we'll be passing all the values okay at the same time i'll be using one more function here that is called function not function in fact i would like to use location icon the one which you define at the top dot add event listener which event listener i am saying on click second function which take event as a parameter and inside this i am saying console just to confirm whether the records are being taken console dot log hey just and we say get weather okay one second we'll be passing what latitude and longitude same i just copy this and paste it here okay everyone so we have written till here when i try to run my browser so i should see there is a message name called show error is not defined but obvious because this message what we are writing it here is called show error okay this as a function as a parameter it is not defined let me define this function called show error so we are saying function show error which take error as in sorry this take error is in parameter now in this we are using notification dot style dot display equal to what block after that once again notification element dot inner html equal to what we are just using this as a paragraph and here error dot message okay and after that paragraph so this is how we are basically writing it down and now see it is immediately asking you to know your location okay if i say allow that's okay okay so nothing you can see now it is saying get weather is not defined because right now the moment i click on this so it is saying like get weather is not defined but obvious because i told you this get weather function i need to develop so i get to develop this function call get weather but before that i'm using the another function call function get search weather get search weather in which i'll be passing what city name now what exactly my api will be in case if i want to make a call i will be using let api equal to now the url will be what http colon double forward slash api dot open weather map dot org now open weather map dot org slash data slash two point sorry two point five that is a version slash weather okay question mark i have to take the city dynamically so i'm saying weather question mark q equal to here we are using what city and we are using am percent app id equal to the one app id we have used it already okay what is that that key so that is a key 
which we've already written that app id we are passing it right over here okay q equal to city and app id equal to this now after that to make the restful api call i'll be using one independent or uh, by default api which is available to us that is one is called what fetch okay so if you just check this fetch it is basically a take request info and give you the what a promise response so return type will be the promise type in this fetch i'll be passing what the api and we'll be using dot then then means if the request is successful we are saying function function response then function is a parameter response we are saying let data equal to response dot i'm expecting the response of stripe of what json we're saying json now and return what data so it will be returning data back to me now if it is successful then what then i'm saying dot then once again it is chaining again function again data and parameter now in this case we'll be getting a lot of things i'm saying weather okay dot temperature it's a predefined dot value equal to i'm using what math dot floor inside this we are passing what data dot main dot temp it is a predefined property we are receiving it now hyphen kelvin whatever the kelvin value is basically we're taking is called 273 on the top minus kelvin followed by another property what weather dot description weather dot description equal to we are using data dot weather zeroth position because it contains lot of data but i will be taking what description out of that then weather dot icon id weather dot icon id equal to data dot weather dot icon then dot icon then once again weather dot city okay equal to data dot name after this weather dot country dot equal to data dot sys dot so these are the properties i have it right now with me okay and once i received all the property i'll be using dot then i'll be using one function and i will say what display there is no function written called display weather but i am gonna say there's a one function name called display weather this function i yet to write but this function i'm just putting it here okay now this is closed after that since i need to get a weather from the api provider so i have to also pass what the latitude and longitude which i'm receiving it from the client because here i just want to have two things the properties as well as weather both and both i'll be using it one by one okay so here we have kept this get search weather and now i'll be calling one more function after this logic and i'm giving the name called function get weather okay it takes two parameter one is called what latitude and second is called longitude so we have two things called latitude and longitude and uh, here i'm using this property called what let api equal to once again if you remember uh, i have used this statement i'll just copy the same and uh, pass it here 
but challenge would be this time i will not be passing city name because there are two options are available either you type the city name or else you click on the icon and let your application identify the location which you belong to so after this weather question mark here i will not be using q i am using what lat equal to latitude okay and we are using and lon equal to we are using longitude okay and app id equal to what key so this is the variable which we have it now okay now similar thing which we have used it on the top okay called fetch api so i just copy this same fetch api again because i really don't want to waste time on keep on typing the code when we know it very well it can be similarly done i just copy and paste it, it here so the same fetch api dot then response data equal to response dot json return data then weather dot temperature mat dot flow says country dot display weather so we have used the same thing here and after that we have to use the last function here that is called display weather display weather and here in my display weather i can use what i can element dot inner html equal to i'll be using img src equal to icons slash dollar and we'll be passing what weather okay dot icon id okay dot png okay so that we are basically putting it here dot png and after that we just closing that okay and this icon we also need to close here so rather than closing this i'll be closing that and this i'll be closing it here now we'll be using top element sorry temp element temp element dot inner html equal to what we'll be using this dollar weather dot temperature dot value okay and uh, after this value we can just use this asterisk sign the one which i told you okay and use span span okay next we are using call talk element so we have get sorry dac element so we have called dac element dot inner html equal to weather dot description and last but not least location element dot inner html equal to what I'll be using once again this, and here weather dot city comma dollar weather dot that's it. These two properties we have to use it, and we are all done. Let's check with my code if I get any error. Now allow. so awesome you can see now 27 broken clouds globe undefined that's perfectly fine intercity you can see awesome beautifully it is showing you 
the conditions it's saying smoke 28 degrees centigrade in the norm let me put another city here i'm gonna say called pune awesome your application is working perfectly fine and uh, let's see one more i would say awesome and now we are planning to develop one very special game for you in javascript and now it's time to talk about another very interesting game that is known called tic tac tic tac toe is world's favorite game we have already played a lot in our childhood days and still my favorite game so i have decided to basically offer you this tic tac toe game developed in javascript html plus css which can create something really very really great effects for the end users so let's go and start developing our next game that's called tic tac toe so in this tic tac toe i will start working with creating a folder called tic tac and inside this i'm going to create a new file name called index html now here onwards the same thing i'll be creating this html tags and now here onwards we want our some classes for headers and footer but so we're going to create some div tag now so in this div tag i'll be creating some of the tags in which the CSS class will be applied. So we are just going to create a classes. Uh, sorry, we are going to just use those classes, but we will create it later on. So just go ahead and create those. So we are saying div. Okay. So now this point onwards, this is my first div tag. Inside this, I will keep my h1 tag. And under this h1, I will be offering some of the headings, which will be useful. To contain some necessary information with regards to this game so div here we say h1 and uh, inside this h1 we give the message called class equal to header and here I'll give the name called is a tic-tac-toe game after this div class yeah here we will start working with our form tag within my form tag I will start my div after div tag I will use label so label for player 1 or else I can say player 1 and inside this let's give the name called Player one label is closed, and uh, after this label, we'll start working with our input tag. Input now in this input, what are the details I need? First, I need call type equal to text number one, second, placeholder equal to enter name, next, name equal to player one. Next, we want ID equal to player1 and then any class if I want to apply. Anyways, we're going to close this. This is my first text box and uh, same thing I would like to create for my another one. So, the first div tag we have used, let me go and create another div tag. In this div tag, I'll use the same label. Copy the same, paste it right here, and this is for player 2. So we have this two players with me, and after this div tag, I'll offer the submit button now. Input up to submit. start game now the form tag is closed here div tag is also closed so you want the div tag to be closed or before that that's up to you now so here we have a call div class whichever we have taken so if you want you can basically put it later or before whatever 
so we have a basically form tag with us so form tag is there later on you can just show some containers where the details will be visible to me so here after the form tag let me try to offer but first check whether it is really working fine so here Yeah, we have this option called intername, intername after the stick type too. So, yeah, so here the details we have taken input attribute text and input attribute text. Okay, so two values we are taking now, and accordingly we will go ahead now finally. After the form tag, we would like to start with working with the div tag again. Div, and inside this div, uh, since I haven't created any CSS classes, so those we can use it little later on. But let's have this div, and inside this div, I would like to use one more div tag. Okay, and uh, here we want to use one more div tag. So inside this div, we will be using one more div tag. So in this div, we can just give the value called data id equal to zero, id equal to zero. It's just the value we are passing it. Div data id equal to zero. The div tag is getting closed. Fine. So that's how we want it now. So here, the first div tag is closed. Like that, we can create another data id so 0 1 2 total number of 3 we want to create it so i want to create 0 1 2 3 4 5 like this so the way we have created here for this div let's go and create one more div tag id equal to 1 Three options we have it now okay like that I can keep on creating the others also two three four five so zero one two three four five total number of five we have created one more I would like to create it now here for six There will be no difference because we haven't changed anything here. Okay, so the div tag is getting closed here. Okay, and uh, that's it. And uh, if you want to create a, some clear board or button, that you can basically offer it a little later on. But here we can use one more div, and here we say div. div class equal to relative and within this div tag I can use any image tag if I want so I just leave it as it is and uh, after this I can create one more div tag and inside this another div okay and uh, under this I'm going to create a button Okay, and in this button, we'll be having some value. Okay, we can secure the value name called replay. This button is created, and now we can create a clear board span. And here we say clear board. That's it. Okay, so here it's just a small game I want to develop it better now there's no user interface has been used so this user interface will be using it later on by offering them a pure look and feel so that you know it gives me more better look when your application will start but most importantly I need to start working with the JavaScript part 
where the logic will get calculated here okay so we want to start with the javascript so let's get included the javascript in my code so here i can say here a script tag a script equal to now the file i haven't created so let it be as it is that's it so this is my script tag and let me try to include my style sheet also so i just say link are you equal start sheet and the name called app dot css though i haven't created but i'm giving it okay that's it so we have taken this html into our consideration now we'll be creating this css as well as the javascript to make this example complete well we are ready with our HTML, but it's time to basically go back and spend time on our JavaScript. So we're going to create a new file now with the name called app.js. And inside this, we will start writing the logic with our main application. Okay. Now, the first thing is how we're going to start now. Yeah. So, first thing what we need to do is we need to attach window dot add event listener. And when the window will load, some logic should happen so i'm saying load second is the name of the function so the name of the function perhaps does not exist but i can give the name called app which i'm going to create it shortly now here first of all let me try to create a game board i'm saying let game board equal to now let me have some of the values because it is eight digit so we just make it like that and one more for making it nine. Okay, so that's how we're going to create it now. Okay, now this is all empty right now. After that, we're going to create let turn just a new variable equal to zero. What this is, it keep tracking if x or zero player it's turn. Like which player turns it to be. So just it is trying to mention it. I'm saying let winner equal to false. Okay. Now let's go and create the player. So create player how do you going to create a player we say const player equal to what we going to pass name okay equal to now inside this we can say name equal to name next we say return name that's it okay after that i'm defining let player x equal to player with the empty value and again player y equal to player is an empty value now let's try to initialize the app okay initialize the app now inside this initialize the app, we're going to create a new function. Function app. And inside this, we're going to create a variable like by saying let input feed equal to first of all document dot get element by id. Here we're going to take the class name of this particular text field so we are saying input hyphen field okay dot focus 
okay now after this we have to say const add players equal to once again document dot get element by id we'll just give the name called player form okay next we are saying add player okay dot add event listener we want to attach to the event on which event submit event and what logic add players okay after that once the players are added we are saying let replay replay button equal to once again document sorry yeah, document dot get element by id or rather i would say document dot query selector document dot query selector replay hyphen btl okay to be just the name we are basically taking that and here we say sorry replay button dot add event listener which event i want to say click okay that is the first event second reset board reset that we are basically passing that okay now this is the initial case which we have it now beyond that i will add this is the players what we have added and right not slides to add the players so this is how we have initialized after that let's add players how to basically add the players here we have to just define the function add players okay so we'll take event as a parameter and say event dot prevent prevent default this prevent default will try to prevent the default uh, you know behavior which is submitting to be get avoided and now here we say if this dot player one so we just define the property called player one if this dot player one dot what value okay is blank okay or this dot player two sorry this dot player two now i just want to find it out its value also value blank then what i should do in this case i'm saying alert you must enter the name for each field the user has to add the values and after that return okay now the next thing is like we would like to select the players in this inside this by saying const player form container again const player from container container equal to document dot query selector document dot query selector here we will just pass the value call enter hyphen players okay now we say const board main equal to document 
dot once again query selector code underscore main okay after that clear form container dot class list dot class list dot add here we are giving the name for what height container height hyphen container and after that you just say board main board main dot class list dot remove height hyphen container Okay, so we have basically taken that and after this what I will do I'll just say player x dot name equal to this dot player one dot value okay this for player x copy this player y two and after that that's it so we have done it now so we'll be calling other functions one by one but that is the first thing which we have implemented well so add player function is added right now and uh, after this add player we have to basically call one more that is called which returns the current player so i'm saying return current player and here what i will do is we'll just write function and here we say current player and in this current player what we will do is we will say return turn just variable okay percentile two we are just adding it with this zero okay if it is then x Turn, I'm telling you okay or else so we are in like the current player who says the current player right now well after this adding the return current player we're gonna add the other function that is known as called return the current player return current player is having this value and after that we need to say resize the square in event browser is resized once again if the browser is getting resized automatically the square size of your uh, tic-tac-toe should also get increased so we just say resize squares and here we're gonna say this option equal window dot add event listener now we have a call option called resize here and the second parameter what we are passing is called on resize okay on resize now let's try to add it after this we are writing this function called function on resize that is the function name for me the one which you are passing into the second parameter we are saying let all cells equal to document dot query selector all in this we are passing board underscore cell okay and then we're using another option called what let cell height equal to all cells with the position okay dot of set width of set width 
after that we are saying all cells dot for each here we are passing cell and after that we are using cell dot style dot height equal to now here we are using this back tick and we use this dollar sign and say cell height and that too in a pixel so this will be taking the dynamic values okay that's it that's it over now we have to just launch our billboard now billboard build board so how are we gonna build our board now for this we are saying function billboard and inside this billboard we will see this option called let reset container equal to document dot once again query selector and pass the value call dot reset okay and after that we are saying reset container dot class list dot remove and we are passing the value call reset hyphen hidden this value and after that we may call some other type of functions also okay so for those functions i can say first will be called on resize after that we are calling add cell click listener but i do not have that function with me so these functions we need to create it by our own okay so we will just leave those for a time being let's go back and create another functions now so we just want to write another event with cell click event for player to attempt to make move so here we are trying to say cell click event for player to attempt to make move now this function we need to create it so we just say function now we just say function and give the name of the function to make move now function make move it takes event as a parameter and here we are saying console.log and say turn now let's go back and try to check the another condition that is called let current cell equal to percent because you have to read the value from there and here we are saying what event dot current target sorry event dot current target dot first element child okay dot data set dot id so we are reading this values after that we use another variable called let cell to add token now here we are typing document dot query selector and here in a using back tick I am using this value call data hyphen id okay equal to here we are using once again in a single quotes dollar current cell okay so this value we are taking it like that after that we are using this situation called if 
self to add token dot inner html exclamatory mark blank once again if self to add token dot inner html equal to blank then what next so self to add token dot inner html equal to blank then what you should do i'm saying console dot log and give the value the one which you want <coughs> okay so in this console dot log what value we can give it cell to add token we have it it is taking this value to the current cell dot inner html console dot log and inside my console dot log we can set this cell is already taken so values are already taken for this and now we will be returning those values after that we will be using else condition and here we use once again if current player okay is x then we'll be using this option called cell see we have this property option available called cell to add token so we're saying cell to add token okay dot text content equal to current player okay and we say game board the one which you have created pass in this game board this value call current cell and uh, in this current cell value will be equal to x okay else we can say cell to add token dot text content equal to current player okay and say game board current cell equal to like this okay so here we are adding the values like that so it is closed after that we can just use the function name call is winner to check whether the user is winner or not so we are saying is winner okay and uh, after that we are saying turn plus plus after that we are saying change we do not have the function name call change board header names okay so it's just like that we're giving it so as usual we can leave this function for a time being and uh, we'll call this little later on so leave it as a for a time being okay so your function is now ready so the next thing what we need to check whether it is tie or not okay so we are saying function check if tie we're just checking the function whether this game is tie or not so here we say if the condition is turn greater than 7 alert game over okay we can say game over or else we can say a tie okay well after that we are saying winner function is winner now what we will check is we will check const winning sequences winning sequences and here sorry here we are having this array and having the different conditions associated we say 0 1 2 probability we are checking it 
and then I just copy it well we are saying 0 1 2 and here we are saying 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 0 3 6 again 0 3 6 and once again 1 4 7 4 7 and next we have a call 258 8 then we are checking the value called 048 8 and one more last option we will put is called 246 6 so these conditions we are adding it now after this array we can say winning sequences dot for each and give the name called winning combos winning combos and inside this winning combos we are giving let cell 1 equal to winning combos position 0 then let copy and uh, paste 3 times cell 2 cell 3 and here we get the value called what 1 2 3 values we are giving it and after that we are checking the condition let's say if and here the conditions we are checking what exactly that will be for the game board we are saying game board set 1 current player sorry current player amp percent amp percent come down to game board cell 2 I just want to copy this the same line and paste it multiple times now here we are checking the condition for cell 2 and cell 3 and uh, cell 3 and uh, after that we are starting the position so after that we are starting the position call by cutting this condition call const cells const cells and then equal to document dot get element by or sorry document dot query selector query selector all and here let's select the position dot board underscore cell okay then after that we will be using cells dot for each cell and inside is what we are passing we are saying let cell id equal to cell dot first element child okay dot data set dot id so this is the value which we are basically adding it now and we are using one more if condition we are saying if cell id now we are talking about call cell id triple equal to cell 1 or cell id cell 2 or cell id equal to cell 3 okay and in that case we can use cell 
dot class list dot add give the name called board just give the class name winner so here we'll be giving the winner and a part of that we can use the other conditions too okay so here it is adding the value and now let's say let current player equal to document dot get element by id so you can basically define it so current player you want so we can use the current player or whichever conditions you want so here we use what the cell winner now small change rather than using current player we can use the current player text a new variable we are creating it current player text document dot rather than saying get element by id we can say query selector and in this query selector we will be giving the value by saying dot board player hyphen term the value which we are giving it here in that query selector value which we have given this let me try to put it in a parenthesis like this okay now here we just check if current player x then what then in this case we can say current player what will the value we are using current player text dot inner html equal to now we can define the value whichever you want to offer it we just use a condition called div class equal to Okay, so we are saying congratulations. Okay, and here we say congratulations along with this dollar sign, and here we pass player by dot name. And here the div tag is getting pushed like this. Okay, so that's the message we are basically printing it. And after that, we give this value and say this message called winner equal to true. And after that, if you want to apply remove that function we haven't written we'll be talking about a little later on and just say return true again so your function is ready now and later on we can just check the condition if winner if winner or we can say check if type and return false that's it now in a continuation to this example we are going to develop another function which the name is called change board header names so let's continue by defining the new function called function change change board header names so this change board header names will be the new function for us and here we would like to check whether the user is winner or not. So here we say if not winner then what? Then in that case we have to say let current player text equal to document dot query selector in this we'll be getting the details like 
dot port and here we're gonna give the name called player and hyphen turn player hyphen turn now later on after this particular variable we have to just check the condition by saying if current player equal to x if the position is x sorry let me try to put it in a capital letter here x then we have to say current player dot inner html equal to now here we have to just use the same option called backticks because i want to go multi lines that's the benefit of this backtick and here we say in our inner html span class equal to name hyphen hyphen style process and here we want to use the statement now this value we want to write it with name attribute so it is getting close and here we are saying dollar with this player x dot name and then close the span tag and we say you are up like this and after that we say div class equal to we just gonna create a class which later on we can apply the CSS style on the top of that u hyphen r hyphen winner and here we say closing the div tag so the div tag is closed that's it and now after this line what next we have this called else condition else what else here we say current player text dot inner html inner html equal to after this we're gonna write the span class equal to here we say name hyphen hyphen same option we're gonna use it so in this condition so winner conditions so let me try to copy the same rather than copying it again and again i'll just copy the whole text span class equal to name hyphen hyphen style player rather than saying x we have to use y you are up you are winner okay so here it's getting closed well after this what we have to do create another function called reset board function reset board now in this function reset board we just say console.log a small message resetting resetting is added now afterwards we will be using the game board and the same game board what we have used it earlier i'll be using the same conditions on the top if you remember that was the game board for me so i'll be using the same game board we copy this yeah with the same condition okay game be equal to this after that line we will say let sell to add token sell to add token equal to document dot query selector all here in this i'll be using another class called letter now sell to add token whichever we've used dot for each square and within this square we would like to use square dot text content equal to black after that square dot 
parent element dot class list dot remove and here we would like to say board okay underscore underscore cell winner so these classes we get to create because these CSS classes we are just using this but we haven't created we'll be using it little later on so that was the point now after that we are defining the turn value turn equal to zero because we are resetting it and winner equal to false after that winner equal to false we just define another variable called define let current player text current player text equal to document dot query selector all yeah document query selector all so here we're going to use the name called board define player hyphen hyphen turn after that current player current player text current player text dot inner html equal to once again we have to use the condition for up and winner point so let me try to copy this inner html equal to okay and in this we have to say player x dot name okay just everything is same no change at all okay now here after that we are going to write one more function called function add cell click listener that means when I will be adding or clicking something to my cell, what kind of event I would like to listen. Here we are saying const cells equal to document dot query selector all. Let's check the condition board board cell. And here once again we say cell stop for each dot for each and here we say cell dot add event listener which event I want to listen click and the second parameter will be handler once called make move okay and this function which we have created called add self clicks listener okay this I'll be calling it here perfect later on once it is done let's try to add one more function called function remove cell click listener remove cell click listener now here we say let all cells equal to document dot query selector all let's pass board cell and now we say all cells dot for each cell and here we say cell dot remove event listener which event click and second parameter will be make that's it so friends now here most of our javascript code is written now so going forward 
we would like to use CSS and finally we'll be applying everything into our HTML file. Well, after the JavaScript file is ready towards my application, now it's time to go and create our HTML file. Sorry, the CSS. So inside my tic tac, I have got app.js and index.html ready. Now here I'm going to create another file here called app.css. See, you can basically put this app.css in either folder like in static folder, but I have just kept it outside. Now from this point onwards, I would like to start with my basic functionalities. Okay, what those are? Let's start with the first feature called body. With my body, some basic settings I would like to do like in background image, background color. So I just start with background color. Background color, I can just use it as a white. Okay, uh, but I don't think so it's really needed it. So if you want, you can have it otherwise. Leave this background color because it's by default going to be white only. And now, next would be called height. Height will be 800 pixels. Next, background position. Background position, I just say like center. Next, background repeat in case if you do not want to repeat the image. Background repeat, and here I say no repeat. Next, background size. Here we are saying cover. Okay, we will resize the background image to cover the entire container. Okay, so that's what the body part. Now, the next thing is we have to select the the rest of the CSS classes, so first select div dot relative. Inside this div dot relative is first say called position. Position we are saying absolute. Next is top. From the top, I'm just making 760 pixels. Next, right. Right, we are just saying 120 pixels. Next, after this, we are saying height container, height dot container, or oh sorry, height hyphen container. Here in height hyphen container, we will display display colon none. Well, after that, we have to use the header point header inside this header we will say color will be by default white but still we just say color and uh, white next text line we just say center next margin margin will be 50 pixels Next, font family. Font family, I'm selecting called permanent marker. Permanent. Permanent marker. Okay. Next class we are talking about called interplayer. That is called dot inter hyphen players. Now in inter hyphen players we will say color. We'll once again we can use any other player, but we can just use white or any color you want, or you can just use hash. Okay, margin, margin we are giving it is called 0, auto width, we are looking forward for 80%, next text align, center, 
position relative now next we are going forward for input field in this input field we just say border border 2 pixels solid and black next outline outline none i do not want any outline to be there next padding i can take 4 pixels 8 pixels 4 pixels 8 pixels now margin we are saying 0 0 10 pixels ok and finally 4 pixels after this margin we say font size 18 pixels ok so that is your input field next we are talking about something called input field focus input hyphen field ok colon focus now here border 2 pixel solid red or any other color which you want to use it next how you want your submit button to be so i'm saying dot submit hyphen btn border 2 pixels solid and black padding 8 pixels and again 8 pixels font size 18 pixels now width 250 pixels followed by border radius 5 pixels next your margin from top let's take 10 pixels after that background color let's take white only okay so this is the property now going forward you can associate with your submit button active and submit button focus so we are saying dot submit hyphen btn colon active and two options we are taking followed by condition outline none outline none next border we are talking about for two pixels solid and the color red ok so that's the one and uh, after that we like to use power dot submit hyphen button colon over what you want change the background color to what white you can use white smoke well here we like to use uh, dot board here we like to use player hyphen so these are the classes we were using in our javascript we remember and here we say color color we are using once again white or you can use this white smoke whichever you want so well later on text align 
center margin 10 pixels 0 and 10 pixels height 54 pixels okay so these are the properties initially we have taken okay so after this turn let's go and start the another classes here i'm saying dot name hyphen hyphen style and here we are saying color red and then font size 22 pixels well now coming back to the another properties now we are talking about the next important called border container called board container dot board container here we define width which is 40 pixels we are taking or sorry 40 percent we can rather take after that background color that we can say coded blue okay next margin we are taking is a zero and auto after that font size font size we are taking zero next border border we are taking two pixels then solid and then followed by box shadow we remember this box shadow is one of the very very season three popular property here we define three pixels three pixels three pixels zero pixels and rgb we can talk about called black okay so my border color will be shading color will be black after that we are offering this board cell dot now in this board cell we are defining width now in this width we are using calculation C A L C and in this calculation we are defining 100% okay divided by 3 this calculation after this the next property will be display display will be inline block next font size we are taking 40 pixels well text align center border we are taking two pixels solid and black adding 20 pixels vertical align top next font family This form I can use permanent permanent markers. Okay. Now, next option, a part of this, we have a call your board cell value board cell hyphen winner. I would say rather hyphen hyphen winner. Now, spelling wrong, this has to be D. Yeah, board cell winner. Let's make background color red. Okay, and uh, 
later on just use letter now in this letter we just give the color combination so color will be white next position relative top 50% next transform translate by Minus fifty percent. After that, font family. We are making it once again permanent marker. Let me copy. Okay. Now, here next option will be called winner container. Here we are giving winner with dot dot winner hyphen container. Okay, so for this winner container, what are the values we want to use it? That's you want to basically do it. So if for this winner container, what I would rather suggest is you can use dot. Reset text align center margin twenty pixels up. That is for reset and now reset hidden. Inside this reset hidden. We will set display none. Display none. Okay. After this, the replay button. It's yeah. Now we will talk about replay button. Dot replay hyphen BTA. And here width. We make it to twenty five percent. Okay, and uh, followed by padding. Ten pixels. We take it from here, and twenty pixels. Border. This border we are taking is called two pixels. Followed by solid. Okay, and black color. Now later on, border radius. Border radius we are taking five pixels. Later on, outline. I am saying none. After this outline, we say letter spacing. Now this letter spacing would be again zero. After that, text transform. This text transform value we are talking about called uppercase. Next font size. Font size, we are taking sixteen pixels. Then margin top, margin top would be twelve pixels. Then word spacing, that you are taking three pixels. Followed by background color, this you are taking white as usual. So this is for your replay button. Okay, now in a similar line, we can also have call dot replay hyphen btn colon hover followed by dot replay hyphen active. Now apply the common style outline. We are making it null. Then color, we are making it is called white. Then background color will be black. Okay, and when it comes to the congratulations, 
so we'll be using this dot okay so this congratulations class will be using font size to what 24 pixels and uh, after this we are using this call winner dot u hyphen r dot winner in this winner we'll be taking font size okay that's 18 pixels after that height we are taking 18 pixels again then line height line height we are taking 18 pixels and then margin 2 pixels and then 0 okay that's it so last but not least we would like to use this uh, dot replay hyphen btn this i'm saying width 50 percent 50 percent so this is what my css file is all set i know it was pretty lengthy but it is required for this particular application okay everyone so we are all ready with our css also now it's time to go back to our index.html file and take care about the final finishing touch so we have this index.html file with us and now the css class which we were using it in our application that is known as called this uh, permanent marker this class is not by default available so we have to include this using this external api so here where we have a call css with us before that we want link so within this link we want a one variable name called href equal to now we have to give the proper location by saying https colon double forward slash fonts dot google apis okay dot com slash css question mark family equal to permanent plus marker okay so if you just copy this into your browser you will get to know where exactly it is using okay if i just copy and paste it so i just need to say https before yeah https fonts dot google apis dot com slash oh spelling wrong css family equal to permanent marker that is the main url from where i can take this kind of font so here css so that's what i was cross verifying it well it's there we have included our css also but in which class we need to use that is an important now js i also want to include it so here in my head tag only i would like to include a script src equal to app.js so here my script is actually loaded now after that if i just go back and check the final outcome of my code which is index.html file well it pretty much look like in basic nothing else has started when we talk about called start game okay so it needs to start because there is no css class are attached so I need to attach those classes within my code. So here onwards, we have to start with 
offering those CSS classes so that at least I can apply those common behaviors to my application. Okay, like here we have a call div. We haven't attached any class to this. After this body, we have a call div h1 class equal to header tic tac toe. Then we have a call div. We have a call body. Uh, under this, we have a call another div tag. So just imagine how many type of classes are available. One we have a call div class equal to header. Div class is closed. Again, we have a call one more div tag. So like that, multiple CSS files are there where we have to apply the new CSS class to make it happen. So now we have to just go back and change our HTML and to apply our main class. So this is what my final HTML, which looks like the same. You can see we have added all those type of CSS classes which we had that is called enter player, player form, player container, label, placeholder, and player container. And if you see all different type of classes, we have attached this to. Okay, because here only my CSS class will get applied and the JavaScript will apply those kind of dynamic CSS based on certain conditions. So these CSS classes are already there added inside your HTML page. Our app CSS is ready. App.js is also ready. Now let's go back and try to reveal how it looks like. In. Awesome. So it looks like pretty nice. Tic Tac Toe is a game. It is expecting. When I say start game, it says you must enter a name for each field. Validation is working. Let me try to add two names and say start game. Awesome. So now you can see it is saying, hey, you are up. Now let me try to give the values. Awesome. Now you can see it's saying like, hey, you are a winner. Great. So guys, congratulations on this. The first example of how the tic tac toe game is used. So it is a classical example of CSS, JavaScript and HTML together. So this time, we're going to talk about our next very interesting feature that is known as called dealing with another example that is called snake game. So snake game is one of the very, very powerful example, which I'm going to share with you, which will help you to understand like how we offer a very simplest way of developing a mini project. Okay. That is something which is a snake game. Let's see how the snake game is important and how we're going to deal with this. These are our previous examples which we have seen, which I will call a project which we have created that is called quiz application. And now we're going to start working with our new project. Now here, first of all, I'm going to create a new folder that is called snake game. And inside this snake game, we need some new folders. Uh, first folder I'm going to create it inside this that is called images. And uh, within this snake games, I'm going to create few new files that is called index.html. And uh, here I'm going to create a new file name called app.js. At the same time, I'll be having some of the CSS files if I need. So I can say app.css. So total number of three files I have it now. Let me close down all the files, whichever I have opened it earlier. So now that looks cleaner approach. So this is a snake game for us from where we need to start. And uh, we have a called index.html file. And here I will as usual create our basic HTML syntax. And uh, here I would like to include our script tag, script src equal to app.js that's it and now going forward we will start developing our next implementation of snake game now inside my body tag i would like to have some basic property called speed okay and uh, later on i'll be taking the input from the client so we are saying input type equal to so here we can justify the speed and we can give id equal to game speed and followed by value equal to 
we can give the value called 5 initial value and min equal to 1 that is the minimum value and max equal to 9 that is the maximum and minimum value we can offer beyond that I won't allow the users to go and step that means the increment value that is 1 well that is the input type and now another input we are taking input type equal to button and uh, value equal to start and then id equal to game start okay so we're giving these values after that i can give some bricks so two bricks we are giving it and start working with the div tag now and in this div tag i will be using the canvas it is a html5 feature we use canvas and i just give id equal to game area that is a canvas and uh, after this canvas we will the div tag is closed here after the div tag i can use another div tag div here i can say class equal to i may not have any class written but i can say class equal to relative so later on if i want to apply any css style i can certainly apply and after that i can offer the images okay so i may not have any images right now so i just leave this image blank right now okay and this is script src i'll load it only before my body tag get closed it's always a good practice to keeping this script tag on a bottom of the body tag always designed for good practice now this is almost ready for me let me check okay so i can see values now it will go maximum 9 that is how we have given and minimum is 1 start is the button which is not doing anything but later on we can allow some logic inside this now we have to start working with our main javascript tag this is my app.js and here onwards we will use some of the properties okay which i want to initialize it so we are saying var game start equal to none initialized second game speed equal to none next game area equal to none game area context equal to none then game area width game area width equal to 0 that is in integer value game area height game area equal to 0 again then cell width cell width equal to 0 play score equal to 0 again next snake equal to null next snake food equal to null next snake direction equal to null snake speed or else I can say speed size speed size equal to 0 next we have a call timer equal to null so these number of properties we have initialized okay now after that we will be writing a function by saying function 
name is called initialize okay and here in initialized we would like to use some of the properties first we are saying game start equal to document dot get element by id here i can give the value called hash game start let me put it in double quotes game start now game speed now these all basically the values are there game start game speed these all values we have to take it okay so we will be seeing these values one by one so let me say the another one that is called game speed game speed equal to again document dot get element by id now we are passing the game speed game, game speed now here once again i will take another point game area i say game game area here you have to give the value called game area okay so these values we have taken now we will be talking about called game area context game area context equal to game area dot get context get and in this game context we will be using what type of context we are saying 2d okay because i want to have the kind of 2d so this is how the kind of environment we want to set next we talk about game area width equal to just initialize to 400 next game area height equal to 600 now cell width we are initializing with 20 next game area dot width ok so game area dot width equal to game area width and then we define game area dot height dot equal to game area height so these are the values we are initializing this okay now after that we have to start writing the logic here i'm saying game start game start dot now we have to line uh, which event you would like to take so i will say on click on click so when i basically click what should happen so on click equal to function so what you want to write it here i'm saying this dot this dot disabled equal to true so I want to disable these values and after that we want to call another function inside this but which function let's do that so here we are saying function start game start game and uh, here in start game we want to define the initial score see the initial score for the player will be certainly zero so we say player score equal to zero after that direction in which direction you want the snake to move so we are saying snake direction equal to right in the right direction then speed size the value oh sorry the variable which you have defined so speed size equal to because it will be accepting the value from the text boxes or from the drop down so it certainly will be string type so we have to use parsent so we are using this option called parsent and here we are using game speed dot value okay so we are using this value game speed dot value now here we would like to calculate certain things what those are 
first we are saying if okay what if condition uh, see this function we are writing called start game because there are certain things which you need to make it so like that we have to define it so function initialize we have started okay and then after that we have written on click within this so this is what the on click we had and there onwards we have to finish this point and after that we've started start game and now we'll be writing the logic for this so here we are saying if <coughs> we're saying speed size we're saying if a speed size greater than 9 in case if it is the value is hard coded it then we would like to write the logic here and what this logic would be it says if it is greater than 9 we say speed size equal to 9 we basically initialize to what 9 here we say else if speed size is 0 we say speed size sorry speed size equal to 1 that means if it is less than 0 I will be making it minimum to 1 if it is greater than 9 I will be making it to 9 maximum and that's it okay so after this else if condition is getting closed we are saying speed size equal to 1 so here we just say snake snake equal to array so that is my array for me and after that we are saying snake dot push because it needs to move ahead and here we will be pushing it towards by saying x position 0 and then the y and here the y value will be what cell width that means how far it can go so it will go within the width of this application okay so that's how exactly we would like to make it okay so here we have a call cell width which we have given here after that what we have to do is we have to define our own function called clear interval and this clear interval perform any logic whichever i would like to make it okay so here after that snake dot push value has been given here i will be creating one more function here that's known as called uh, create food okay so here we are saying create food so create food will be the function for me now you might be thinking where this function is but this function will be declared soon within your application but here first we are saying the function called clear interval clear interval with a timer okay what are the timer will be passing it and after that this clear interval will be saying timer equal to set interval with this we are saying create game area create now here in our application whatever the value we are giving it that we need to basically implement so here we are giving this called create food is a function we are calling after that we are calling this clear interval clear interval will be just like in a typical function which is there after that we are using this option called create game area so this will be available to me on which the value will be taken that okay and then we will be telling you how you can call this function create food and how to create it first well so we are talking about a functionality called create game interval so this create game timer is the one which we have to create it by our own so this function which we are passing it after the saying set interval this function is not it there so we have to basically go back and create this function within my application fine so what we will do is just particular one we will try to comment it for a time being okay so here we have a call what create interval in this create interval we'll be 
passing any parameters which we are passed as a what as a timer here and here we are calling this called create food so here after that we'll be calling this function called create food so let's go and say function create food and this function create food let's go and write a logic here and what logic we want to write it in a create food we say snake food snake food equal to and here in our curly braces we use two direction x and y we say in x we say math dot round and inside this we say math dot random after this math dot random function we have to just take this calculation and check the another parameter called game area width game area width minus cell width the one which you are passing it and here after that we will be performing the calculation by saying cell width ok so this is for our x coordinate similar way we would like to use for my y coordinate also now math dot round round dot number game area game area height but here rather than using width we'll be using height minus cell width let me give some space divided by cell width okay so that's where exactly it got closed okay now here our application is now ready by calling the function called create food like that we'll be going to create another function called create game area let me go and create all the functions first so we are saying function create game area create game area there's another function for me after this create game area there will be another function i'm going to create it that is called control function control okay after that we'll go to write one more function called function write score there's another function available for us control we have a call write score there's another function which you're going to write it down here that is called function write score is done now we say create square create square there's another function and finally we'll have a call change direction function change change direction so that's it so these many functions we wanted to create it here in our system well we know it very well that we have taken this call create food create food function is already ready now now we're going to talk about our next function call create game area and in this create game area we are defining two locations var x direction and y direction so we say uh, snake x equal to snake the position we are taking is called zero and we're saying dot x for the x direction we are saying var snake y equal to snake position we are taking once again zero and dot y so two directions we have taken x direction and y direction now here we are starting game area context dot fill style that you know it very well it is a property fill style equal to which color you want to fill this up so i'm saying hash white color okay and then we are using this game area context again dot fill react fill react now give the position values i'm saying zero comma zero comma game area width game area width comma 
gain area height. So we are basically filling the values. With color we want to use it called stroke style. Let me take this game area context again. Dot stroke style. Stroke style equal to now we give the another color here by saying hash. Okay, and then the next option called same game media context dot stroke react stroke react and here we pass the values again 0 comma 0 comma game area width comma game area height so we are passing those values like that and now after this we have to write a logic of the directions now see the when you talk about snake game it moves left right and center up and down so now in this case we have to increment the situations accordingly so we say if the snake direction if the snake direction equal to right then we say snake x plus plus now else if else if same let's copy this snake direction left then what should happen here we say snake x minus minus okay so we are taking like that let me copy this again now here here we are taking about left right we said down so in this case we say snake y plus plus and in this case if it is up then we say snake y minus minus so these conditions we are taking it now now here after this else if condition we would like to take another if condition now here in my if condition we are using some more lengthy statements what's that we say if snake x if snakes x minus 1 or snake x double equal to game area width which we have taken divided by cell width okay or we are taking this condition called snake y snake y double equal to minus 1 Okay, so we are giving this call minus 1 or snake y snake y equal to gain area height to serve it or here we will take the another condition here yeah we will take the another condition here call we will have another function called control which we have created it some time back and inside this control it will take some parameters so what those parameters we can pass then we can say snake x comma snake y comma third parameter will be snake so this would be my another function okay so here we are passing the conditions just like that okay now here this is available to me as a parenthesis and here 
we are writing the situation for write score which is so far the function is only created not described more so we are writing the write score the score will be written here and here we are saying clear interval because the timer will be stopped okay and we are saying game start dot disabled equal to false and after that return that's it so this is the logic for we have written to this particular example now we can use another if more conditions here just to check the behavior of my code if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more well here we have finished till this game start dot disable equal to false and we returned now going forward after this return we would like to have another condition for the snake x so we say if snake x if snake x double equal to snake food dot x okay snake food dot x ampersand ampersand snake y double equal to snake food dot y then in this case i will say var new head var new head sorry var new head equal to here x colon snake x y colon snake y snake x and y colon snake y these options we are taking it now after that we are using this option called player score plus equal to speed size and then we are calling create food method again and here after that we are using the else condition and in this else condition we are saying var new head equal to snake dot pop okay and we are saying new head dot x equal to snake x and new head dot y equal to snake y so these values are basically associating with your heads and after that we are saying snake dot unshift unshift snake dot unshift and here we are passing this option called new head that's it and after that we'll be starting with our for loop by saying for var equal to var i i equal to zero then i is less than snake dot length and uh, snake dot length and once i plus plus okay later on we just use the option called create square and in this create square we are passing snake snake position i dot x comma same snake dot y that's it so it's getting closed here and after that we are calling the same option 
with this snake food let me copy this again and here rather than using this you can say snake food dot x and snake food dot y okay so now this values has been added into my code now we start working with your control control needs to take three parameters x y and the array so we are passing this option called control and in this control we are taking x comma y comma array three parameters we are taking it later on we are using this option called for var i equal to zero i is less than array dot length and i plus plus and after that we will be using this option called if condition and here we say array i which value we are passing dot x double equal to x m percent m percent here we say array with a position called i and in this we are saying dot y and this position we are checking for the y condition for the y condition so it returns what true return true the condition okay that is for if condition else return what false now that's it now we are talking about this option you call write score this write score we have to use the game area context game area context dot font equal to here we'll be passing the situation we are saying 50 pixels 50 pixels and then sense hyphen serif after that we are using call game area context again. Let me copy this. Take it again. Call game area context dot fill style equal to here. I'll be using the another color now. We say hash okay. Now, after that, we are saying once again the game area context dot fill text here we are saying score colon and here we say plus player score whatever it is with game area width game area width slash 2 minus Hundred, and then again in area width slash two. So this is where exactly the right score where the data will be actually written. Okay. Next we'll be having this option called create square. At this create square, it takes two parameters. One we're talking about called x. Second is taking y. And now here we're using this game area context. Same dot fill style equal to let me give the color after this we are using call same area in text game area text dot fill react here we are saying x multiply by cell width comma y multiply by Cell width, comma, cell width, comma, cell width. This is what my create square is. Now we are left with only one option that is known as called change direction. It's time to figure out this last function called change direction, which takes one parameter called e. Typically we talk about four parameters. Now here we are passing this option called var keys equal to e dot 
and later on we want to say if keys equal to 40 okay ampersand ampersand snake direction equal to up okay so here we say snake direction equal to down so we are changing the directions here okay now let me try to copy this and here we use else if four times okay so here we talk this 30 40 and here we say 39 and followed by 38 followed by 37 39 38 37 and here we say up let's change to what left down right here we say right up left the three options we have changed and last but not least here i will just use window dot on key down equal to change directions and window dot on load okay equal to initialize that's how exactly we want to use now and this function what we have defined in initialize okay so in this initialize we are having this game start dot on click in and all so we have a call start game now so this start game will be calling it here okay so in start we have a call snake we have a call snake dot push and after that we are calling this function call what create food clear interval and here we say timer equal to here set clear interval and here change game area slash speed size that's why you want to use it okay everyone so our code is almost ready so we have this complete javascript code ready with me now it's time to basically use within my html just to check how it may behave so in my html page i have written this uh, normal speed number game speed value button start we will call game start after that we have a call canvas where we written id equal to call game area dev class equal to relative and uh, that's it and here we have a call script src equal to app.js so that's it what we have written now finally we would like to see how it may look if I try to use in my browser. Let me try to refresh. Okay. I really do not see any changes in my code. Okay. Uh, despite I'm having this because the CSS content is actually missing. Okay. Because then only my code will really look better. Because if there is no CSS, it won't really make good towards my application okay and i also want to have certain images but those images we will take it a little later on let me go back and try to bring css into this picture now so first of all have this uh, index.html file with me and here i want to use css so inside my head tag we want to use link rel equal to style sheet okay href equal to app dot css 
okay now here in my css we want to offer certain details what those details i want to start working with i will start with my body part body so we want to offer the font family so font family maybe a little bit later on i can use it first i want to use margin margin 20 pixels auto later text align center next font size font size 150 pixels also 150 percent and uh, here we want to say background background image since i do not have any image so i will just leave it as a blank okay so just otherwise i have to say url and inside this url give some values but i leave it as a blank because i do not have any image i will say background color In this background color i can just use white after that height i can just say 800 pixels after that background position background position i want to use center then background repeat background repeat i want no repeat then background size cover okay let's see if there is an effect in my okay i see it's now in the middle better now inputs canvas we have to basically take that here we shall talk about called input okay in this input i say font size font size may be optional i can make it but let me say font size 100 percent then text align center then padding i want to say 5 pixels and 7 pixels okay looks better now well here after that i can use canvas in this canvas i want to say the background color i just say white after that border radius border radius i can say 20 pixels then shadow if i want to use it so i just say box shadow box shadow i can say 3 pixels 5 pixels and 6 pixels and the color is black let's check awesome so i can see here uh, the logic is there so shadow you can easily see how it has been using and uh, that's it and this div i can say div dot relative position absolute top here i'm saying using 760 pixels left 120 pixels that's it so this is where exactly i program now when i say start okay so there may be some error here let's say cannot set a property of call on click null so this we can just check this into this uh, game start dot on click
let's check anyways we just try to fix that issue in uh, while but anyways we have our created css and now going forward we'll be implementing rest of the logic within my code okay everyone so we have changed some names here because there was some value was mismatched so we have basically changed those values with your properties and now when i try to relaunch my application by uh, this index.html file so now in my index.html file when i try to add so it's just as usual same let me say start and here you can see game start when i go up you see like it's starting right now okay isn't this an amazing game right now friends okay that is the same game what you used to play it earlier okay where you can just change the direction go up and you can see the score tenor being placed here that's it so this is where exactly the look and feel of your game has been taken and uh, you can just increase the speed suppose if you just put a value called what zero it by default set whatever value you want to take it with a start now you can see based on that the speed can be justified and the example can be developed okay you can see the start button is disabled because right now the user is still going on unless the user game is finished this one is not going to work fine so like that you can see and automatically this will be positioned this one is called food that is how we have used it in my example now called app.js you can see we are using this example name called food create food so in create food of the specific interval time this will be automatically created and the snake will eat and increase the size of the code okay that's it and now the css has been given if you want to add certain image certainly you can add it otherwise this is the first game which we can see how it is running and giving you the better example and with that we come to the end of this video i hope you had fun building these applications if you have any doubts or queries let us know in the comment section below thank you for watching